My name is Tara, and I was once just like any other ambitious young woman. Engaged to the man of my dreams, Mark, and supported by my best friend, Samantha, life seemed to be a fairy tale come true. Another milestone reached, Tara. Samantha exclaimed, raising her glass in a toast at a celebratory dinner. My business was growing, and the future looked bright. To continued success, Mark added, his eyes sparkling with pride. I smiled, feeling content and secure, but little did I know that everything I held dear was built on a lie. One fateful evening, while looking for some documents on Mark's computer, I stumbled upon an email chain between Mark and Samantha. My heart stopped as I read their plans to seize my business, leaving me with nothing. My hands shook, and I felt sick to my stomach. My perfect life was unraveling before my eyes. I took a deep breath, knowing that confrontation would lead nowhere. I needed to be smart, strategic. So I closed the email and acted like nothing had happened. Over dinner that night, I struggled to keep a composed facade. Tara, is everything okay? Mark asked, noticing my distant expression. Of course, darling, I reassured him, forcing a smile. Just a little tired from work. I continued to play the part of the unsuspecting fiancé, all the while observing Mark and Samantha's interactions more carefully. Their secret glances, coded conversations, and increasingly frequent meetings all confirmed my worst fears. But I refused to be a victim. I began to work on my plan, careful not to arouse suspicion. I played the doting fiancé and loyal friend, but inside, I was gearing up for the fight of my life. Are you excited about the wedding, Tara? Samantha asked one day, her voice full of forced enthusiasm. More than anything, I replied, holding back my true emotions. It's all I ever dreamed of. But my dreams had changed. Revenge had become my focus. I knew that my battle would be a lonely one, and I prepared myself for what lay ahead. The smiles, the laughter, the celebrations all continued, but underneath the surface, a storm was brewing. I would take back what was mine, and I would make them pay for their betrayal. And so, with a heavy heart but a determined spirit, I began to orchestrate my revenge. The game was on, and I would play it with everything I had. No room for mercy, no space for forgiveness. My name is Tara, and this is my story of unfaithful love, betrayal, and a quest for justice. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of secrets and deception. I could no longer look at Mark and Samantha in the same way, but I had to pretend that nothing had changed. Over coffee with Mark one morning, I gingerly brought up a topic to test the waters. Mark, have you ever thought about expanding the business overseas? I asked, attempting to gauge his reaction. Actually, I was discussing that with Samantha, he replied, somewhat guarded. She had some thoughts on it, too. I'd love to hear them, I pressed, hiding my surprise. We'll talk about it soon, he said, brushing it off. His evasiveness confirmed my suspicions, and I knew I needed to act. In my quest for revenge, I realized that I couldn't do it alone. I needed allies, people who could help me with their unique skills. I reached out to an old friend, James, a private investigator. We met at a secluded cafe, where I poured out my story. Tara, this is dangerous, James warned after hearing everything. Are you sure about this? I have no choice, James. They've betrayed me and I won't let them win, I insisted. He sighed, finally relenting. All right, I'll help you, but we'll need to be very careful. We began crafting an elaborate plan, gathering intelligence on Mark and Samantha's movements, their secret meetings, and every detail of their conspiracy. James introduced me to Lily, a master of disguises and a brilliant strategist. She would play a crucial role in my plan. So, you want to tear them apart without them knowing it's you? Lily asked, intrigued by the challenge. Exactly, I replied. They must never suspect that I'm behind it. We spent hours brainstorming, devising intricate strategies, and preparing disguises that would enable me to infiltrate their secret meetings. Remember, Tara, Lily said, her eyes intense. You'll need to become someone else. Lose yourself in the character, but never lose sight of the goal. I understand, I assured her, feeling a mixture of excitement and trepidation. Through our research, we uncovered the full extent of Mark and Samantha's plans. Their greed and treachery knew no bounds, and it fueled my determination. One night, over dinner with Samantha, I carefully steered the conversation, trying to extract information without arousing suspicion. Samantha, don't you think Mark has been working too hard lately? I said, feigning concern. He's ambitious, just like you, Tara, she replied, her eyes darting away briefly. But there's a line, isn't there? I pressed, 
I mean, we have to look out for each other. Of course, Tara. We're a team, she said, her voice filled with fox sincerity. I smiled, playing along, knowing that the real game was just beginning. Days turned into weeks, and my plan began to take shape. With James' intelligence and Lily's guidance, I was ready to turn the tables. One final meeting solidified our course of action. Tara, this will not be easy, James warned, his eyes serious. Once we start, there's no turning back. I know, and I'm ready, I replied, feeling the weight of what lay ahead. We raised our glasses, toasting to a plan that was more than revenge, it was justice. To taking back what's mine, I declared, my voice steady and resolved. And to making them pay, Lily added, her eyes gleaming with determination. The stage was set, the characters in place. The play of betrayal and retribution was about to begin, and I was the director. And in this play, there would be no room for mercy or forgiveness, only victory. The time had come to set my plan into motion. With the guidance of Lily, I transformed into an entirely different person, unrecognizable even to myself. As I looked in the mirror, I knew that this was the beginning of the end for Mark and Samantha. My first target was Mark, my fiancé. I knew his weaknesses and his ambitions. As a potential business client, I arranged a meeting with him under the guise of a wealthy investor named Michelle. Mr. Mark, it's a pleasure to meet you, I greeted him, extending my hand. The pleasure is all mine, Ms. Michelle, he replied, smiling as he shook my hand. We sat down to discuss business, and I was careful to play my role convincingly. I've heard great things about your company, I said, feigning interest. And I believe there's potential for collaboration. I'm glad you think so, Ms. Michelle, Mark responded, clearly excited by the prospect. Throughout our conversation, I subtly dropped hints about Samantha's supposed doubts regarding the expansion, carefully planting seeds of discord. I had a brief chat with Samantha about this project, I mentioned casually. She seemed a bit hesitant about certain aspects. Do you think she's fully on board? Mark's face changed slightly. Samantha and I are on the same page, he said, though I could see the doubt creeping in. We continued our discussion, and I left the meeting knowing that I had successfully planted the first seed of distrust. Next, it was Samantha's turn. Using another disguise and the name Susan, I approached her as a journalist interested in an exclusive interview about women in business. Samantha, I must say, I admire your passion for empowering women in the business world, I said, praising her work. Thank you, Susan. It's something I'm truly passionate about, she replied, clearly enjoying the attention. During the interview, I craftily brought up Mark's ambition, highlighting it as a potential weakness. Don't you think that sometimes Mark's ambitious nature might overshadow the core values of the company? I asked, pretending to be concerned. Samantha hesitated for a moment before responding. Mark is driven, but we share the same vision, she said, though uncertainty lingered in her voice. I nodded, pushing the subject further. I've heard rumors about potential overseas expansion. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think it might be too risky? She looked at me, clearly taken aback. Who told you that? She demanded. It's just industry chatter, I reassured her. But it seems like a significant move. Are you completely aligned with Mark on this? Samantha's face tightened. Of course we're aligned. We discuss everything together. I smiled, knowing that I had touched a nerve. I'm glad to hear that, Samantha. Alignment is key, especially with such major decisions. The interview concluded, and I left, satisfied that I had successfully sown the first doubts in Samantha's mind as well. Back at our hideout, James and Lily were eager to hear about my progress. You're playing a dangerous game, Tara, James warned, concern in his eyes. I know what I'm doing, James, I reassured him. They won't suspect a thing. And what if they do? Lily questioned, always the pragmatist. They won't, I said confidently. They're too wrapped up in their own schemes. And besides, I know them better than they know themselves. The game had indeed begun, and the pieces were moving as planned. My revenge was taking shape, and I was one step closer to victory. They say revenge is a dish best served cold, and mine was being meticulously prepared, one calculated move at a time. Mark and Samantha's treachery would be their downfall, and I was more determined than ever to see it through to the end. With the first seeds of doubt planted, I began to weave a web of intrigue that would ensnare Mark and Samantha completely. James and Lily were instrumental in this phase, providing assistance in unexpected ways. Together, we crafted a series of interactions designed to play on Mark and Samantha's fears and greed, pulling them further apart. 
I orchestrated another meeting with Mark, as Michelle, to discuss investment opportunities. Ms. Michelle, thank you for meeting me again, Mark said, shaking my hand. Mr. Mark, it's a pleasure, I replied, smiling. I've been giving our collaboration serious thought. I'm eager to hear your ideas, Mark said, leaning forward. I'm interested in a significant investment, I began, watching his eyes widen. But I need to know that you're the decision maker here. I've heard that Samantha might have reservations about the direction you're taking. Can you assure me that won't be a problem? Mark's face flushed slightly. Samantha trusts my judgment. We're a team. A team, I repeated, letting the word hang in the air. But every team has a leader, doesn't it? You are the one driving the ship, right? Of course, Mark asserted, though I could see him faltering. Good, I said satisfied. I wouldn't want to invest in a divided company. Meanwhile, Lily, playing the role of consultant, met with Samantha. Samantha, I've been looking into your business model, Lily said, posing concern. I believe there are certain areas where Mark's strategies might not align with your long-term vision. Samantha frowned. What do you mean? His aggressive expansion plans could jeopardize the integrity of the company's core values, Lily explained. But Mark knows what he's doing, Samantha defended, though uncertainty crept into her voice. Of course, but it might be wise to keep a close eye on his decisions, Lily advised. Especially if he's making moves without consulting you. James, in turn, played his part by anonymously sending Mark an email containing fabricated evidence of Samantha's doubts about their business strategy. Mark's confusion and suspicion grew as he confronted Samantha. Samantha, I've come across something disturbing, Mark said, showing her the email. What's this? Samantha asked, scanning the content. I never said any of this. Then why is it here? Are you undermining me? Mark's voice rose. I would never do that, Mark. Samantha retorted, tears in her eyes. Why would you think that? Their mutual suspicion evolved into hostility, and I watched as their alliance began to crumble. Things are falling into place, I told James and Lily, my eyes filled with determination. We just have to keep pushing. Their desperation grew as they started making mistakes. Mark's aggressive moves began to alarm their clients, and Samantha's distrust of him became more apparent. One evening, I listened in on a heated argument between them. Mark, you're going too far, Samantha cried. You don't trust me anymore. Mark shouted back. You're holding us back. I'm trying to save us from your recklessness, Samantha yelled. Their relationship was disintegrating, and I knew that my plan was working. Every step they took was leading them into my carefully constructed trap. Tara, they'll destroy each other at this rate, Lily warned me one day. That's the plan, I replied, cold determination in my voice. I continued to orchestrate events, manipulating their fears, greed, and egos. The web was tightening, and my revenge was within reach. I will make them pay, I whispered to myself, the memories of their betrayal fueling my resolve. I knew that the final act was approaching, and I was ready to see it through to its bitter end. Mark and Samantha's downfall was inevitable, and I would be there to witness it, knowing that I had orchestrated their destruction. They had chosen to betray me, and now they would suffer the consequences. The game was far from over, but I was winning, and I would not stop until I had my revenge. The climax of my plan was at hand, and I watched with grim satisfaction as Mark and Samantha's relationship crumbled. Their desperation was palpable, and their plans were falling apart. At a critical business meeting, I decided to reveal my hand. I arrived as Michelle, knowing that this would be the last time I played this role. Mark, Samantha, thank you for joining me, I said my voice steady. Miss Michelle, we're ready to proceed, Mark replied, though I could see the strain in his eyes. I'm afraid there's been a change of plans, I said removing my disguise. Or should I say, the truth has come to light. The shock on their faces was priceless. The realization dawned, but it was too late. Tara? What is this? Samantha stammered. You betrayed me, I said my voice cold. You plotted to take everything from me, but you failed. This is ridiculous. Mark protested, but I could see the guilt in his eyes. I have evidence of your treachery. I declare, producing the documents that James had helped me gather. Your plans, your lies, your manipulation, it's all here. The room fell silent as the weight of their betrayal settled. You will pay for what you've done, I said, my voice unwavering. The legal actions that followed were swift and decisive. Mark and Samantha's reputations were ruined, their social disgrace complete. 
Thank you for everything, Lily, James, I said, embracing my loyal friends. You did what you had to do, Kara, Lily said, her eyes filled with understanding. You shown incredible strength, James added, his voice filled with admiration. My business flourished and my reputation was enhanced, but the cost of revenge weighed heavily on me. One evening, as I stood alone in my office, I reflected on my journey, the pain, the triumph, and what I had learned. I did what I had to do. I whispered to myself, but at what cost? I knew that I had won, re-establishing my life and moving forward without the toxic people who had betrayed me. But the emptiness lingered. The chapter on this phase of my life was closed, but the scars remained. I was stronger, wiser, but forever changed. The future lay before me, filled with possibilities. I was ready to face it, knowing that I had survived the darkest betrayal and emerged victorious. But the question lingered, haunting me, what was the true price of revenge? I looked out the window, knowing that only time would reveal the answer. My story was not over, and I knew that there would be more challenges to face, more lessons to learn. I was ready, for I had proven to myself and the world that I was a survivor, a fighter, a woman who would not be defeated. With a determined smile, I turned off the lights and walked out of my office, leaving behind the shadows of the past and stepping into the promise of the future.